I'm going to win a national championship, but I'm using the Rainbow Warriors and I'm only allowed to recruit players from the state of Hawaii. Can I bring this little group of islands a trophy? That's what we're going to find out today, but we're projected to be one of the worst teams and our best player is a kicker, so that is always very concerning. There are only going to be 24 players from the islands that I can recruit and we need five cornerbacks, but there's only two available. Now, the one smart move I have to make is redshirting both of these players because they're from Hawaii and I'll honestly probably have to make them cornerbacks because our DB option are not too vast. After a week of recruiting, it was very clear to me that there were a ton of players we weren't going to be able to get, and then I got locked out from the one punter in the state, which might not seem like a big deal, but we don't have a kicker going into next year, so I'm going to have to change his position, but because he locked us out, we might not have a kicker next season. Now, I was pleasantly surprised we ended up beating Appalachian State by three, but this is more of what I was expecting. This team just isn't very talented, so I'm going to go ahead and get into week eight, and it turns out we actually did end up getting the punter along with our first cornerback and a left tackle. I mean, we did lose all of those games, putting us at one and four, but most of the prospects from our state were interested in coming here, so that's huge. This decision might end up being a huge mistake, but I am going to schedule everybody for our game against BYU. So we have 12 players visiting for this rivalry game, and I feel like I have to hop into this one. Winning this game could legitimately change program history, and this is not the start we wanted. I was trying to go for a cool little play to start us out, but instead we're going to begin the game the wrong way. Things aren't looking too bad, though, so I think we're going to get into the end zone here and the tight ends open. In all honesty, keeping it close with this roster is impressive enough as we're going to get in here. And I want to go for the two-point conversion so we can go into the half by three, which we're thankfully going to be able to do. The only thing holding us back is our defense as that should have been a tackle for a loss, but instead they got in there. So we need to respond back and this will do the trick. Well, there's four minutes remaining and it's fourth and three. We have somebody in the flat, but he's not going to run for the first. So in the end, that's pretty much going to end up sealing our fate. Maybe one year we'll be able to beat BYU, but but for now, I have a program to rebuild and we have seven players that have now committed to our team. At this point, I might as well just sim to the end of the season. And it looks like we landed a ton of prospects that'll be great for depth. We also didn't fully lose out on DD Maxwell, who is our only chance at having our quarterback of the future. Going two and 10 honestly isn't too terrible for our first year of this rebuild, but next year might be worse because we're losing a ton of our best players. And even though we should end up landing DD Maxwell, I don't think the number 66 recruiting class in the country is going to be too beneficial for us. The best news is honestly that we got ourselves our kicker and now it's time to go through and cut every player that's not from Hawaii. Right now we have 31 players from the state and hopefully I can land all 20 players that are available this year because we're going to need them and there's actually a few four stars. While we sim through another year I am going to redshirt all these Hawaii boys and even the walk-ons are going to get that treatment. Now I am going to do something smart and set up an FCS school for visit week so hopefully that can lead to us landing all of these guys that this season. You know, I can't even act surprised that we lost our first four, but the important thing is we've already landed all of these recruits and the rest of them are coming on a visit for this week against South Dakota. We simply can't afford to lose this one and that's why I've jumped into this game to make a difference. Now, I'd love to say we'll easily win, but that simply isn't the case because here in the fourth quarter, we're trailing by four, it's third and seven, and thankfully we are going to pick this one up, but if we want to win, we still have a long way to go and hopefully this is a good pass. It was not not intended to go to Haynes, but you won't see me complaining about that because it's put us in a decent position and I don't know how to say his name, but that was a crazy move. All we really need is one stop on defense and I just got burnt with my user, but their quarterback missed the throw. So we got the ball back and on fourth and goal, this should pretty much do it, but our receiver stopped his route. We were going to have a touchdown and now we have to get one final stop on South Dakota, which will not be the easiest thing to do. I'd hate to be so pessimistic, but their quarterback is literally dotting us up and I I feel like we're in a very bad position now, but they're going to throw the ball in bounds so they can't get in field goal range. And I don't know if their quarterback will even be able to get this ball all the way to the end zone. That was honestly a good throw, but we're going to pick it off. And this is a huge win for visit week. It didn't cause any of the higher overall recruits to commit though. So I think we're going to lose the battle for each of our top four targets. I went ahead and sim the rest of our games where we would go two and 10 once again, which is a problem because I'm on the verge of getting fired. Marcus Mariota might not make it the next season and this hurts to do, but I have to decline this transfer because he's from California. The rule is I can only get players from Hawaii, and I think we're going to steal these two linebacker prospects, and it turns out I'm right. That'll get us the 43rd best class in the country, and the fact that I'm able to do that with only players from Hawaii is absolutely insane. I understand that it might seem like the team isn't very good, but after working very hard, I've compiled a team of only players from Hawaii, and it's time to turn around the Rainbow Warriors. Despite the 840 overall wall, 
walk-ons we're forced to have. This team is all built from one stay. We just have to keep hoping there's a lot of prospects available for us to recruit, and this year we got 22. It's kind of weird the number two player in the country is from Hawaii, but I know we have no chance of getting him, and I'm okay with that as long as we're able to land some of these other guys. Now, I can't say I'm surprised we're projected to finish last in our division, but I'm hoping we can start the year with a home win against UTEP, which we're not able to do. There's honestly a good chance I get fired, but on the bright side, if I don't, at least I'm in the running for a lot of 70 overall players. I won't be able to get him though if I can't keep my job, so against Buffalo, this result is huge. We would end up going on to lose our next two, but we were at least able to land two recruits, and everybody else was visiting against South Dakota, so I have to hop into this one again. It is going to be in the rain, but that ended up causing an early fumble, and D.D. Maxwell is going to find the wide receiver underneath. Brown looks very quick, and now we have to go with the running back toss to the outside. Montana makes one guy miss. He breaks another tackle, fighting his way into the end zone. I think the most exciting part of this offense is pretty much all of these guys are freshmen, so they're going to be around for a while. And I would have shown more of this game, but we had a three possession lead all day, and Manuma has been a beast for us at halfback, which is kind of crazy considering he's a free safety. Because we don't have that many guys from Hawaii yet, I'm having to play multiple players at multiple positions, but I think it's safe to say that's working out for us. That result was enough for us to land seven more players, including Austin. Wheeler, who is an athlete that is going to be an incredible two-way player. I do want to jump into one more game this season, though, and that's because it's against our rivals, and they're undefeated, so I feel like if we can beat them, I can avoid getting fired at the end of the year, and that's going to be a terrible throw. Now, we are having some major injury issues, but I do trust D.D. Maxwell to get the job done, but that rusher got in so fast. What's worse is he's not getting up, so backup Mark Richards is in, and I don't know if he's going to be able to get it done today. We'll take the first, and I'm relieved D.D.'s only out for a quarter. Unfortunately, Air Force is going to get into the end zone here, but now that it's the second, D.D. Maxwell is back, and he is able to find a wide open receiver in Brown, who's going to make one guy miss as well, and get down at the 45. Again, this result could be the difference between me getting fired or not, so we cannot have drops like that when we need to get points, and at least we'll catch this one. On third and three, I am going to run commit, but they went with the pass, and he is wide open. That wasn't the smartest decision I've ever made, but I think we're going to end up being okay, because it's still only a four point game. We even got to start the second half with the ball and it looks like we're going to take a lead. I know we're still nowhere near winning a championship, but finishing this off would be huge and we're about to go up by 10 points. Our defense has been so dominant and here on fourth down, we're going to get the interception. Time and time again, when we have needed a stop, we have come up clutch and I can't believe they're giving up with a minute remaining, but they're punting us the ball and that will about do it. We just took down our undefeated rivals, but my job security is still 63%. I just decided to just sim the rest of the season, hoping things went well, and we did finish 5-7, and seven, along with landing a few more recruits like TJ Brown, but there really wasn't much else going on. D.D. Maxwell did finish his freshman year with some pretty solid stats, and our rushing attack was split between an offensive and a defensive player, but I do believe this team has a lot of players with a very bright future. It looks like my job security is 68%, so I will keep my job, and again, there are transfers that want to come in, but we have to decline them, and I felt like we were making progress, but this recruiting class was ranked 97th in the country. The big news though is Austin Wheeler, the athlete we recruited, is an 80 overall halfback. So our offense just got a lot better, especially with these new receivers. And with these two safeties I redshirted early on being beasts, I'm actually really excited for this year. We have a monster of an offensive coordinator, which is going to help a ton. And we still have a few walk-ons the game forces us to have, but we're so close to having a perfect Hawaiian team. All right, it's a new day. I'm going into season five and we have 30 recruits from Hawaii. This is the most the state has ever generated, so that's going to give us a good chance at landing a lot of great players. And after scouting everybody, it's safe to say I'm excited to see how this recruiting class goes. Now, I am also still on the hot seat, which isn't good, but that just means it's more important than ever that we win these first couple of games. Unfortunately, it did become very clear early on that some of these recruits we obviously weren't going to be able to get, but 74 overall was the highest overall we had yet, so the program was still on a slow climb up, and against North Dakota in our first matchup, we held them to zero. We're also finally able to put extra points on recruits, so even though it still feels like a long shot on a lot of these guys, I'm hoping we have a chance now. We ended up beating FIU by 10 as well, and even though it's a few weeks out, I think the best week for everyone to visit will be against our rivals, Air Force. I think by the time we sim there, we'll have a good idea of where our season's at, and being 3-2 and two with a close loss at Boise State is not bad at all. It's enough to make sure I don't lose my job, and it's also caused five players to commit to us already, with another 15 people visiting 
visiting this week against Air Force. This is one of those matchups that we simply cannot afford to lose, and our new halfback's gonna score first. From what I've seen so far, freshman Austin Wheeler is a beast, and on this halfback screen, he's gonna get out and dive into the end zone. It's been a long five years, but this team finally feels like it's solid enough to be decent, and hopefully this result is enough to impress all of the recruits that came in for visit week. It was simply never a contest, and D.D. Maxwell took care of business, so I'm excited to announce eight more players have committed to the program. That actually gives us a top 20 recruiting class for the time being, and we even have a lead on two players I never thought we stood a chance in getting. I'm glad our out-of-conference schedule is so easy because now we're playing 0-6 Troy, who remains winless, and we could actually still be in the running for making the conference championship. It'll all depend how these next few weeks go, but we're gonna lose by 4 to UNLV, we're gonna lose by 20 to San Jose State, and we're gonna lose by 14 to the Aztecs. So even though we now have 19 different players from our home state committed to the program, this season still feels like a failure because we fall into the bottom of our division. That means we're sitting at 5-5, five and five, but I have to jump into this game because I believe if we're really gonna improve as a program, we have to make a bowl. It doesn't have to be a good one, but just getting there would say a lot about us. And so far, things have been going pretty well. I am gonna try to make a deep pass here to Patrick Heron and he's gonna bring it in. So the offense is clearly starting to improve and Wheeler just makes all of the difference as he throws a guy off of him and he's gonna get in here. This entire day, we have kept a two to three possession lead over Nevada the entire time. So I think it's proving that we are ready to be a bowl game team and a stop on this fourth and 10 would pretty much seal the deal, which we're gonna get. The Rainbow Warriors continue to improve and I think we still have a chance at landing this 80 overall tight end. Now I'm not expecting us to beat our rivals, but if we wanted their place, that'd be great, which we're able to do. I'm honestly surprised at how pitiful our side of the division was this year, but I think that means that D.D. Maxwell was probably the best quarterback, and freshman Austin Wheeler had 12 touchdowns. He was also our leading receiver, which is a little bit confusing, but his 19 total touchdowns got him onto the all-NCAA freshman team, and we also ended up making the New Mexico Bowl against FAU. They're ranked as a top 25 team in the country, so this could be a massive result for us, and I'm hoping that we're able to continue to stay in it. Their offense has been the hardest thing to stop as they've moved the ball extremely well and they're going to score here. But I think up to this point, we've done a decent job at keeping it close and that'll bring us within three. With a minute and a half left, I ended up being right about us not being able to get stops on defense, but Patrick Heron is wide open in the end zone to get us back within a possession. So that catch might make all the difference. We just need to force FAU to punt the ball. And here on third and four, I ran commit because I was expecting the run. They went with the halfback pass. We still hold them. So we could still win our first bowl game here at Hawaii. That is a dot. And they are sending a lot of heat for a team that just needs to sit back and defend, but I'm not complaining because not only would I like to get a field goal and send this thing to overtime, but I want the win, and that draw might end up hurting us in the end, but I'm gonna lob this ball up to our tight end, and he isn't catching it. Well, it's an iced kick with the game on the line, and Keith is going to hit this one down the middle, so that sent it to overtime, and after scoring on our first possession, we have forced them into a fourth and 13, and they are going with the halfback screen. I think we have somebody out there. He runs out of bounds, so we've officially won our first bowl at Hawaii. Our best season yet ended up getting me a contract extension, which is much needed. I'm here for six more years, and we're losing the two safeties I redshirted at the beginning of this rebuild, but on the bright side, they both ended up getting drafted. Recruiting-wise, I think we're gonna end up getting both of these amazing studs, but I was mistaken as we lost out on the tight end. We still landed a top 30 class with only players from Hawaii, which doesn't even feel real, but the number one player on the board ended up choosing Boise State over us, which really hurts. I do believe that this team is starting to get a lot better, but the thing I'm most proud about is we now have 70 players on the roster and they are all from Hawaii. It's gotten to the point where I'm actually able to redshirt a lot of players and that makes me believe we'll eventually be able to push for a national championship. There's 26 matches in this recruiting class with another stud tight end and if we can land every player that's on the board right now, I feel like we're gonna have a really solid class. This is the first season we've had an offense and defense over 80 overall so I'm expecting a lot but that close result with an FCS school has me a little bit nervous so I'm glad we beat BYU. That already got us a tackle which we desperately desperately needed, and I did put a top 15 team on our schedule. If we can win this one, I feel like we can win any game, so it's very important that we end up pulling this one off. Now that I've been here for like six years, the team feels really good, and I feel like D.D. Maxwell and Austin Wheeler might both get drafted. Alongside the defense, of course, they've made this game not even close, and Arkansas State's just playing really conservative. I was not expecting it to be so easy to beat a top 25 team, and of course we're fumbling at the end of the game, but it's over, so I will happily take this result. We even have a lead on the four-star tight end, which is huge news. And if we can win at Utah State, I feel like this will be the year we make a Mountain West Conference championship.
championship. That's a great result. And it led to a lot of players committing to Hawaii pretty early on. I also ended up scheduling everybody for a visit against Wyoming. And I thought about playing this one, but we've been doing so well. I'm going to sim it. We're going to win by 32. And everybody else that we wanted has now committed, which includes 78 overall tight end Jay Wiggins. I honestly believe our crazy offensive coordinator makes all of the difference. And we're actually sitting atop our division, along with being ranked in the top 25 for the first time in this rebuild. Our biggest games are going to be against San Diego State and Nevada, so I'm going to go ahead and sim to those dates. And what a high scoring win against Air Force. Since then, our matchups haven't been close, and that means we are 9-0 going into our big game against San Diego State. I am a little worried to sim this game, but I want to play the one against Nevada next week, and we lose by three in overtime. I should have jumped into both, but I was so confident in the team, and that was a big mistake. I'm still jumping into this one, though, because if we can win this game, and then Nevada beats San Diego State in week 14, we'd make the conference championship, but we can't stop their QB. So we might be thinking too far ahead. We still need to win this game, and I am going to throw this ball up. I thought we had him beat. It was underthrown, and we're forced to punt, but I think we're going to be able to pin them back pretty far here. I'd love to get a hit stick on McCray, get a little energy going our way, but he breaks a tackle, breaks two, breaks three, and it's pretty obvious already how this game's going to go. They're breaking everything, and with four minutes remaining since D.D. Maxwell's had a terrible game, it looks like we're going to end up losing this one, but we have seen a 28-3 comeback before, so I don't want to rule out the possibility that this one's completely over. After missing the long field goal, I just want to throw this ball up. We have the four verticals on Patrick Heron. I'm trying my hardest to remain optimistic. I'm breaking a sack with D.D. Maxwell. I'm breaking two, but I can't do a thing, and that should give you a pretty good idea of why the score is the way it is right now. I need a miracle at this point, and that is a die, but the comeback still feels almost impossible. I'm not sure if going for two changes anything, but I did it anyways, and we need this onside kick to go in our favor, but they're going to hold on to the ball. So at this point, it's just time to run, commit a bunch. And if they make the mistake of passing here on third down, which they do, we have a chance. We're going to get a tackle here. And then they miss the field goal. So we do have the ball with an opportunity. We have somebody deep. D.D. Maxwell is going to sling it and it's going to be intercepted. If he could have gotten that a little bit farther, I think we would have scored. But instead, the season comes to an end, which does make me pretty sad. I mean, I'm glad we ended up being a top 15 team. But with D.D. Maxwell playing like this, I was hoping we could go a little bit farther. And maybe we will next season. Austin Wheeler went over 900 yards, but he no longer led the team in receiving yards, which is a good thing. But we did make the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. And I'm not expecting us to beat a team like Kansas State, but I will take this result. Only four players are graduating, so we're really not losing that much talent, and you could argue they got replaced with players that are even better. This feels like our best championship window is pretty much everybody that's good on this team is a senior, so we have to win this year, and if we're not able to do it with this team full of players that are only from the state of Hawaii, then we're probably gonna have to wait a few years to have another good attempt. I'm literally going to move all of my coaching points into game management so we have a better chance of winning, and hopefully all of these bonuses can help us out a ton. I mean, not only are we projected to finish first in our division, but we're also a 91 overall. And it's crazy, this entire team is compiled of players only from the state of Hawaii. Recruiting-wise, though, this is the most disappointing class we've ever had. So it really feels like it'll all come down to this season, and pretty much, it's just championship or bust. Considering our first few matchups, I do feel comfortable just simming to the Army game. And originally, I was gonna play it because they were ranked, but now that they've lost two games, I'm not worried as we win by seven. That was enough to land us inside the top 25 again. And there's really no teams in our conference that come even close to our team overall. So I think we're able to sim more, but I did learn my lesson from last year and we're stopping at the San Diego State game. Up to that point, we did end up going 9-0, so there really isn't anything to worry about. But they are the one team that could knock us out of the Mountain West Conference Championship. And after last season, I am not gonna take my chances in simming this one. The only reason I'm a little worried is because it's at their place. And we do have them on a third and nine early on, but they're going to pick it up, putting us in a pretty bad situation early on, and we should have gotten a sack there, but they're going to score. It turns out redshirting D.D. Maxwell in his first season here was one of the best decisions I ever made, because that extra year has allowed him to develop to an even better player, but of course we're going to give up a huge gain here, and this is why we're struggling against San Diego State. I figured they were probably going to give us problems, but I was kind of just hoping we'd be able to avoid it. Hopefully we can do the same thing here as A.J. Brown or T.J. Brown or whatever his name is gets in, and to end the first half, we're trying to do our 
our best to not let him get into the end zone. That should have been a pick, but since it wasn't, it'll be tied at 17. We're not playing like a top five team, but there's still another half of football. And on this opening kickoff return, Hill is going to get it speed to the outside. He didn't get the block he needed, but he was fast enough just to get out there anyway. That spin move is going to get him down to about the 40. And I'm ready to come out and just sling this rock. Uh, hopefully we can bomb them here, which we are able to do. And Eric Brown finally makes another appearance for us. Third and 13. We need to make sure they don't pick this up. I have that all usered and he is going to run out of bounds. I honestly believe that this team has what it takes to go all the way. That's a beautiful block. It gave us enough time to loft this ball up to Heron. And we're going to go with the play action again. But this time we're going to be looking for him on the deep route, which he is going to hold on to. In the end, the Aztecs simply weren't capable enough of keeping up with our offense, and that makes us 10-0 on the year. I fully expect us to finish the rest of the regular season undefeated, and this win over Fresno State will seal that. We're actually the only team that still hasn't lost, and that makes sense at least in our division because everybody else was pretty bad. D.D. Maxwell's senior season has been going well so far, and Austin Wheeler finally rushed for over a 1,000 yards with 18 rushing touchdowns, and then he had three receiving ones as well. Junior T.J. Brown also had a pretty good year, and I don't see how we'd lose this conference championship. We're stuck on an early third and nine here, but that man-to-man -man coverage is going to clamp us up completely. Smith gets the interception, and that is not what you want to see. I was honestly hoping that we'd just be able to blow them out here, and they are floating that ball up. Fletcher's going to get his hands on it. It's going to tip into the pick, and it's been a very slow offensive first half, but I think we're going to score the first touchdown of the day. Honestly, as long as we win this and make it to the playoffs, I really don't care how close it is. I'm rolling out with our pocket passer, getting the score, and that's been the weird thing. I normally don't use a quarterback like D.D. Maxwell, who can't really scramble, but he can throw. And the receivers have been our biggest issue throughout this entire dynasty. To end the first half, I would love to hold Air Force to a field goal here, but their quarterback's taken off. We hit him, and it's going to be fourth and inches. I am a little shocked with how passive they're playing, but since they're still in this game, technically I can't judge, as this has been the hardest matchup we've had all season. I didn't think this one would end up being a contest, but I guess I was wrong, because they're doing a fantastic job, and D.D. Maxwell is 6 for 20 on the day, which shows they have been locking up. I honestly cannot believe we're in the situation that we are, but it's fourth and eight, and I don't know how we caught that. I mean, that was the blindest read I'd ever seen, but we got bailed out, and now the tight end's open for the touchdown. Of course, our kicker missed the extra point, though, so we just need to play good defense, and we are going to lock up on third and 15. We ended up holding onto our lead, and with a minute and a half left, we just need one more first down, which we're going to get, putting us in a fantastic position to run out the rest of the clock and take home the Mountain West Conference Championship. That ended up getting me Coach of the Year, and now it's time for our first ever college football playoff. The semifinals are going to be against Penn State, and I feel like if we're actually able to win a championship with this team, this would be the greatest rebuild challenge I've ever completed. I mean, winning with players that are only from the state of Hawaii is not something that is easy, and on this kick return, Hill is going to get us down to the 15, which means we are in a prime position to start the game off with a touchdown. I have worked so hard to put this team in this position, and now that I've gotten us here, I am not messing up this opportunity. Rice is going to truck a guy and dive into the end zone giving us an early 14 to 0 lead but Penn State is not willing to go away and we should have known it wasn't ever going to be that easy to beat them ideally I'd love to end the first half with a touchdown and this might be a laser look at that throw they're even going with the run on third down here so we're getting the ball back with a little time before the half and if we can get in field goal range that would be huge I'm gonna have the running back right there out at the 25 and Austin Wheeler just made it so we can go into the half up by 10 we literally couldn't have asked for a more perfect ending there and we also get ball to start the second. So we are in a fantastic position and I am going for it here on fourth and one, but Michael Rice holds onto it and he's gonna fall into the end zone. Our tight end has been incredible today. We have them on another third down. We're gonna get the sack. And as time continues to wind down, it becomes more and more clear that this one is out of reach. We're gonna be going on to the national championship and this might be extremely surprising to you all, but Jimbo Fisher actually got Texas A&M to the natty. This entire rebuild all comes down to one game and win or lose, this is going to be it. I've done all I could, but now we just have to hope for the best. And with that third down stop, it is time for us to come out and make a statement. We have a wide open receiver who is going to get down to the 35. And I would like to think that we are a run first team, but whenever we pass, it works out. So that's what we're going to be going with, which is fine considering we're still going to feed it to Austin Wheeler and he is going to spin in. The real difference makers will be these third down plays and they are not going anywhere. So if our defense can keep playing like that, we should be okay. Third and 10 here. I'm kind of hoping for like a cover two look. I really don't have anything open, but we still pick it up. 
up. So that really gives you an idea of how good DD Maxwell really is. I never thought I'd see this much success with the pocket passer, but here we are. And I'd love to be able to hold the Aggies here on the goal line, but they're going to score. That means we need to end the half with one solid possession, and it's going to be a quick one because we have a wide open AJ, TJ Brown, whatever his name is, putting our offense in a fantastic position to end the half. Now, it would have been nice if he held on to that, but I'm gonna go back in his direction and hopefully he can bring this in. But since he couldn't, this was no longer very ideal. The good thing is Texas A&M didn't score after that. So I think it's safe to say we're in a great position still. Austin Wheeler off of that play is going to get down to the 10. And I'm feeling more confident than ever as this game continues to go on. And I just threw an interception. So maybe I shouldn't have said anything there. He breaks this one tackle. If we don't bring him down, I'm gonna be upset. But that that drive was our chance to run away with things. So if we end up blowing it, I'm not going to be happy. There's the interception though. And I can't believe how much they're pressing, but they sent the blitz. We're going to throw it off our back foot and Brown, the other one, Eric Brown gets down to the 20. And I can't believe I never mentioned that Eric Brown and TJ Brown were brothers on this team. We do have brothers. I think they're twins and I can't remember what year I recruited them, but they're probably going to get us a national championship. We'll dump this one off to our big tight end. And this time we should end up actually finishing the job. It's been a long game, but a terrible one for the Texas A&M offense. And a stop here on fourth and eight would pretty much wrap everything up. They're dumping it off. It's over. And I can't believe it actually ended up being possible to achieve, but I I won a national championship with a team full of players only from Hawaii.